Hello and welcome to a short video summary of the Sony KD75 XE9405 or XE94 as it's more generally known. Uh, you can read the full actual review via the link in the description or by clicking the card at the top right of the video. Now the XE94 is technically Sony's flagship LCD TV for 2017. Yes, there is the ZD9 available as well, but that was actually released in 2016. So in terms of 2017 models, the XE94 is the flagship LCD panel. Obviously the flagship OLED panel will be the A1. Now in terms of the um, XE94, it uses a 75 inch screen size, it has full array local dimming. I actually counted the number of zones, there's 16 vertically and 16 horizontally, which gives you 256 zones in total. Not as many as the ZD9 or the DX902, but still quite a lot for a full array local dimming set. Uh, now, 75 inch screen size, and you can buy this for around £4,899, which, whilst not an insignificant amount of money, is actually quite reasonable when you consider what you're getting. And it does mean that the XC94 could be considered an alternative to buying a projector. 75 inch screen size in a relatively small room will fill up most of a wall. Uh, and you know, if you perhaps want a, want a big screen, but don't necessarily want a projector, or you're looking for a, a better HDR performance, which the TV will be better at than a projector, because the projector just can't hit those peak brightnesses, then the XC94 does make a viable alternative. Uh, now in terms of its design, this TV follows the same design ethos that Sony have been using for all of their 2017 flagship models and it's carried over from the ZD9 from last year. So you get a very attractive TV, fairly minimalist in terms of its design. Um, looking at it from the front, all you've basically got is a one centimeter wide black border around the screen uh, and um, there's a nice attractive sort of angled sloped uh, stand with a champagne gold uh, brushed metal finish uh, that, that sets it off very nicely, gives the impression that the whole screen is basically floating above it. Uh, up along the edge, you have a nice two-tone design with a gold trim uh, and a black section, and that looks quite attractive as well. When you turn the TV around and look at it from the back, you can see that there's, um, they're using some quite earthy tones for the rear panel, and also there's a grid light structure. And this is quite, um, quite intelligent, really quite clever, because it actually allows you to hide the panels that are on the back of the TV. So the TV has removable panels, and you can remove them one by one, and they reveal various connections. And the idea is that you connect the TV up, and then you put the panels back on and you can hide both the connections and all the wiring and then give it a much tidier rear panel view. And um, it works really well. So you, you really can have a nice attractive uh, rear, rear, rear panel on the TV with no wires all poking out. It's all nice and tidy at the back. In terms of the connections, this TV has four HDMI inputs. They're all HDCP 2.2 and they support HDR and also support wide color gamut as well. There are also three USB ports and all the usual um, legacy connections. Uh, in terms of the remote control for this TV, it's the same remote control Sony been using all year. Um, bit of an acquired taste, this one, to be honest. It's got a um, sort of rubberized feel to it, which isn't that nice. And the, the buttons are very low, you can barely feel them. It makes it tricky to use sometimes, and sometimes you don't quite know whether you're actually pressing the button. Uh, but it's sensibly laid out, it does get the job done, and you've got the navigation controls in the middle, and all the buttons that you'll need, and direct access to Google Play, and also to Netflix. So, not the worst remote control, but not the best either. Uh, in terms of its features, this TV's headline feature basically is that it will, at some point, support Dolby Vision. They haven't updated it yet for that, but there is a firmware update coming. Uh, in terms of other features, obviously it does support HDR10. It will also support hybrid log gamma when it gets the Dolby Vision update. Uh, and in terms of its smart platform, this TV uses Android 7. Now, it's just recently had an update for Android 7. Uh, now, Android, again, like the remote control, is a bit of an acquired taste. I'm not a fan, personally. I tend to find it's not as robust as I'd like, that the processing might be a bit too much for the actual uh, processing power in the TV. Uh, it is prone to crashing occasionally. I think the layout's a bit... Um, well, the layout's not too bad, but you know, it, it kind of there are three or four different ways of accessing the same thing. It feels like multiple platforms bolted together. Um, however, the new version uh, is reasonably robust. I haven't had any crashes on this TV yet, which is good news. And you can, there are ways you can mitigate it and make it faster by um, by closing certain apps. Um, in terms of its actual layout, you, you've got um, a, a series of tiles, and you scroll down through the layers of tiles, and then across through the ones you want to select. And of course, it has um, all the main features like you know Amazon and Netflix and the catch-up services. In terms of the input lag, well, if you're a gamer, there's good news and bad news. The good news is if you game in 4K, whether that's in SDR or HDR, you can get an input lag of about 25 milliseconds. The bad news is if you're gaming in 1080p, whether in SDR or HDR, the input lag is around uh, 39 milliseconds. So just below 40 milliseconds, not terrible, but not as low as much of the competition is these days. Some of them are getting as low as 20 milliseconds in both uh, 1080p and 4K. In terms of its performance, 
We measured this TV as always and we found that the grayscale was pretty accurate but there was a bit too much blue in the grayscale. Um, however, the TV has a 2 and a 10 point white balance control so it made it very easy to bring down the blue with um, the 2 point and then just fine tune what we needed to do with the 10 point. And as you can see on the graph, there is a very accurate grayscale now uh, and also a very accurate gamma tracking your target of 2.4. So post calibration, excellent gray, grayscale and gamma performance. In terms of the colors, well before calibration, obviously there's a bit too much blue in the grayscale. That's dragging white towards blue and also um, the secondary colors of cyan and magenta. Um, however, once we calibrated the grayscale, then white fell spot into place. And as you can see, the color accuracy was actually very good with the colors all tracking their saturation points quite precisely. And they suggest as well, because as with all of Sony's TVs, there is no color management system. But I have to say that once I calibrated the grayscale, the performance of both grayscale, gamma, and color gamut were all excellent. In terms of HDR performance, well, uh, again, uh, very good. Now there is a quirk on Sony TVs. Once you calibrated the grayscale for SDR, the same calibrations apply to HDR. So you can't do one for each, you know, separate settings for each um, type of source. However, as you can see in the graph, the grayscale actually was, was measuring very accurately after calibrating it anyway uh, in SDR. And uh, it was tracking the PQOTF fairly closely, not precisely, but I have to say that that didn't make any difference to the performance, which was uh, very good in this TV in terms of HDR. In terms of the color tracking and color performance for HDR, well, with REC, 2020, the TV could deliver about 66% of it 2020, so a bit lower than the competition. Most of them are around about 70% now. Uh, and in terms of the DCI P3 coverage, uh, it could get to about 93%, although it at least did, it did track DCI P3 in terms of saturation points within REC 2020 uh, very well. So overall the measurements were good, but obviously measurements only tell you one story. In terms of actually watching content on this TV, particularly HDR, really impressive. I mean, we're talking about a 75 inch screen size. You've got 256 local dimming zones. You've got a peak brightness of about 1,260 nits. So the HDR performance on this TV was spectacular. Really, really impressive. Um, you know, we had no, no clipping. You've got loads of detail in there. You've got uh, the, the 4K um, panel, of course, um, really, really peak bright highlights that really punched out. Good black levels thanks to the local dimming. Very impressive HDR performance. Um, easily one of the best HDR performances I've seen from any TV uh, so far. And of course, on the big screen size, that really adds to the impact. In terms of SDR, again, also very impressive. Once you calibrated it, you had a nice, uh, accurate natural colors, good grayscale performance, good gamma, good color accuracy. Motion handling, as well with, as is always the case with Sony TVs, is excellent as well. Um, you've got plenty of options there in terms of, um, you can use true cinema obviously for film-based content, but for sports-based content, there's options for different settings. And there's also, there's also black frame insertion if you want to use that as well, um, although that will make the image darker, that you can always bring up the brightness. Um, however, some people might see flicker. I certainly have found I saw flicker when watching football with black frame insertion on. Um, so I tended to just use True cinema for movie content. Uh, in terms of overall performance then, uh, really, really impressive. Really impressive um, sound dynamic range performance, really impressive HDR performance, uh, lovely design, plenty of features. Yeah, I'm not still a fan of Android, but uh, I can forgive the TV that. Basically, if you're looking for a really big screen size, uh, you know, a realistic price with a fantastic performance to go with it, including one of the best HDR performances you'll like to see on any TV this year, then the Sony KD75 XE94 is definitely worth looking at. And for that reason, we are happy to award a highly recommended badge. If you like this video, then please like and subscribe. And don't forget, there are more articles, news stories, podcasts, reviews, and videos like this at avforums.com, Europe's largest home entertainment community. Thanks for watching.